All right, that was my colleague Josh Elliott earlier speaking to Dr. Jill Stein. I'm joined now by Leslie Sanchez, Liz Smith, and Steve Chigaris. They are all CBSN political contributors, and Steve, of course, is our CBS News senior political editor. Um, guys, real quick about Jill Stein. She gave an interview where she said that she believes that Hillary Clinton is more dangerous than Donald Trump. Your reaction to that, Leslie? Uh, it could be. I think there's a lot of Republicans, certainly independents, who feel that she's exercised poor judgment on national security. She's making a strong case that Bernie Sanders kind of walked, waded into, and it set the ground for that argument. I think that Jill Stein is trying to get a lot of attention this evening. <laughs> um, but look, if she does raise a, a serious a uh, serious point. We have seen in recent polling that the number one concern voters have with Hillary Clinton is her judgment on foreign policy issues like Syria, Iraq, and Libya. So that's a question she'll have to answer tonight. I just don't put a lot of stock in what Jill Stein has to say. Steve, just trying to make some noise or serious? Uh... Well, I think she probably has serious issues uh, with her, mainly because she's coming from even further left on the scale than, than Hillary Clinton, and especially on foreign policy. Secondly, she's at uh, low single digits in the polls, uh, and she's talking about two people, Trump and Hillary Clinton, who most America, most of Americans don't find favorable. So it's pretty low-hanging fruit to go jabbing at both Trump and Hillary Clinton, uh, hoping to try to get some attention. So uh, hasn't worked out for her so far. She's been on this uh, uh, line of uh, criticism for a while now, and uh, she's still uh, even behind Gary Johnson. Uh, in the polls. All right, Liz, yeah. Leslie, you guys have been in politics for a long time. Uh, Liz, you've advised uh, potential presidential candidates. What would you say to Hillary Clinton as she prepares to walk out on that debate stage tonight? Right before, you know, a couple of hours before the, she has to get, get out there. What I'd say is, you know, regardless of what Donald Trump shows up tonight, you got to have a game plan in mind, which is go out, you know, deal with the trustworthiness issue head on. Two, make an affirmative case for yourself. You know, we have seen young people, black voters, Hispanic voters, sitting on their hands, not showing the same amount of enthusiasm that they did in 2012. And I think that she does need to speak to bigger, broader issues and make a case for herself as someone who just isn't only the anti-Donald Trump. Um, and then the third thing I'd say is that, you know, whether he is angry, whether he's calm, you know, she just needs to go and be the bigger person. Go, go big when he goes small. Go high when he goes low. Um, and, you know, make the case against him about, you know, what a sham his business uh, record is, um, about his sham foundation, but do it in a way that's not overly negative or antagonistic. And Leslie, if you're advising Donald Trump, do you ask him to do some of the things that got him here, frankly? A lot of the things that got him to this point are some of the things that now people say, look, this is no longer primary politics. You're on the big stage right now. <laughs> Can't use it. But he has said in many interviews, well, look, it's worked for me in the past. Why can't I continue using it? What no, I, he's, he has to be himself. I mean, anybody, including the individuals you talk to right now, whether there are avid supporters of Donald Trump or people who are sitting on the fence, they will say they like his refreshing style. They don't like his mannerisms. They don't like the boorish nature of it. But they appreciate that what you get is a no-nonsense approach. You can like it or dislike it, but it's going to be authentic. And that's the comparison and contrast with Hillary Clinton. I think most important thing for him to be in, in, in mind keep it within the rails, which, you know, uh, within the guardrails, which he tends not to do. It's kind of the mature candidate aspect that's critical, but be respectful. You can say a lot of things. You can really get in to a lot of your, you know, choices that Hillary Clinton's made, but as long as he does it in a respectful manner, I think he's going to get a lot of leeway. Steve, I want to ask you about an article I read recently in the Daily Beast, which talked about uh, how perhaps in this election, more than in any other in the past, a polling might not tell the true uh, indication of who is going to win the presidency. And what the article especially explained is that there is so much internal polling that is done. The Clinton campaign has spent so much money in key battleground states spending and tracking every single person who goes onto their website, who buys a bumper sticker, who express any interest in her policies. They send people door to door. They tweet at them. They email them. Mm -hmm. And that's something that Trump just doesn't have. He doesn't have that kind of operation. Is that critical in this election, even if the poll numbers show the, numbers to, uh, the race is tightening? It could be very critical. Uh, but what could also uh, be happening, too, this year, which is uh, people who have um, all this data, 
all this uh, organization to get out the vote. Um, you got to get the people, give the people a reason to get out and vote. You can know who uh, is out there, and you can uh, have the mechanism to get them out to vote for you. But you got to give them a reason to vote, right? So there's an enthusiasm question here. There's a, a, a you know, you got to make the case to people to get out there. You can bring all the vans up to people's houses all you want, but if they don't get in the van to go to the polling booth, right. then then what are you going to win? I mean, we saw a little bit with Ted Cruz in the primaries where he had an operation second to none, yet he couldn't win the thing. Mm. So uh, I think the question is, and, and this is where we have, I think, a lot of questions about both of these candidates, right? We know that both of them aren't very well liked. Uh, we know uh, that uh, they're having a hard time explaining to voters why they should vote for them and not against them, right? And so this is really, again, an opportunity for her to stand up on stage the, one of the three times she's going to stand up on stage with the guy that she's criticizing on a day-to-day -day basis and explain to people, here's why you need to vote for me and not him. And the same for him. Here's why you need to vote for me, not her. And we'll see how that goes over the next three debates and especially tonight. Uh, Leslie, uh, the question about both these candidates are disliked by a lot of people, but the people who like Donald Trump really, really <laughs> like him. And there are people who, like Hillary Clinton, are sort of lukewarm yeah. about her. Could that be enough to tip it in his favor? It's the advantage he has. You, you can't, I think if you're going to run into a campaign and you're going to walk into it, and that, you know, as somebody who works in the campaigns, I'll take enthusiasm over support, even financial support, any day. Interesting. Because they're going to make the five more phone calls. They're going to knock on the additional doors. They're going to get out the vote operation. You can have all the technical expertise and all the mobile and every apparatus that's available to you, but if you can't get people excited to get going, that is, the, people talk constantly about the, the Obama coalition is not coming to fruition. But what that coalition is, it's community communities of color. The African American community is not as excited about turning out. Yes, it's overwhelmingly democratic, but if it decides not to show, if Latinos don't show in the large numbers that they're capable of, that's a, a, a delta that could be critical in swing states. So really it's coming down to the western states like Colorado, where that turned out. New Mexico, we kind of already know that. But Florida is a great example of communities of color and people getting excited or not excited. I'll take the enthusiasm any day. But can Liz, Donald Trump excite minorities, uh, African-Americans, Latinos. I mean, he's tried to in the last couple of weeks, but some of the things that he said has left a lot of African-American activists scratching their heads, and also his failure and his unwillingness to meet, for example, with the NAACP or the Congressional Black Caucus. Maybe people think of it as, that's the establishment, I want to hang out with those folks, I want to talk to the people directly, but still, perhaps a mistake? Um, look, I don't think the fear is that um, Hispanic voters and black voters will somehow go out and vote for Donald Trump. I think the bigger fear is that they might sit on their hands and might feel like there is no advocate for them in this race. So I think it's incumbent on Hillary tonight. Look, there could be an audience of 100 million people. There is no better opportunity for her than to make the strong affirmative case that she is the only candidate who will build on the progress that President Obama made over the last eight years. And I think that will be a really persuasive argument with a lot of the Democratic base that we're seeing not as enthused right now. Steve, uh, we've, Leslie pointed out that uh, she has struggled to bring together that Obama coalition and Obama demographic. And that's surprising, even with the president, the first lady, uh, Vice President Biden on the campaign trail for them, are they not even able to move the needle? Well, nobody's voting for them anymore, right? Yeah. They're voting for Hillary Clinton. That's the biggest, uh, the biggest problem that Clinton has right now. Again, look at her numbers. They're historically high, just like Donald Trump's are. And so, yes, you can have Obama out there uh, and, and these other surrogates that, that may have higher uh, favorable ratings trying to make the case for Hillary Clinton, but he's not on the ballot. And so how do you get people excited? How do you get the people who voted for Barack Obama excited? Just because he says to do it doesn't mean they're excited about Hillary Clinton. So she does have this issue with African-American voters with younger voters, people who went out uh, in higher numbers in 2008 and 2012 because they're just not that excited about Hillary Clinton. And this is where we talk about enthusiasm. If you look at the enthusiasm numbers, Trump's supporters are uh, uh, more enthusiastic about him than her supporters are about her. And so uh, is that going to be enough to put him over the top and to make up for uh, some of the other deficiencies he's having with the electorate? We'll see. But as you said, enthusiasm is a good thing to have. All right, Leslie Sanchez, Liz Smith, Steve Shigaris, it's always great to talk to you guys. Sorry it's so sunny. You guys look great, though. You look fabulous. You look fabulous.